Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Angewandte and the Institute of Architecture, I want to warmly welcome you here tonight. I see a lot of familiar faces, um, and already now this feels a bit like a rare uh, get-together. But I also see unfamiliar faces, and I'm happy that we reached out into Vienna. So we almost managed to turn this auditorium into a Gartenbau Kino. So we are here to feature a film about an exceptional architect. The fact alone that there has been a film made about an architect, which is screened in cinemas, to me as an architect is fantastic. It shows us that there is an interest in our profession and an interest in the built environment and in quality buildings. In architecture, which is ahead of its time, but also an interest in capturing recent architectural history and the figures who wrote it. Karl Schwanzer, Er flog voraus. Um, I think there is no English title, it translates to um, He Flew Ahead. I myself have not seen the film up until now, I only watched the trailer. In this trailer, Wolf Briggs appears commenting on Karl Schwanzer. Nobody in Austria dared to do that at the time. Das hat sich niemand zu der Zeit getraut in Österreich. I would like to uh, warmly welcome uh, Wolf Briggs now, but he's not yet here, and therefore I propose we continue with the screening and I come back um, on stage later. Thank you for being here and enjoy the screening. Learn that members of the Karl Schwanzer family are here. Um, thank you very much for, for joining. And I also want to welcome uh, Max Gruber, the director of the film. It's really impressive how the passion of this architect um, comes across in, in the film. Uh, Wolf, I want to warmly welcome you. It's a pleasure and honor having you here and um, so to say back home for this event, um, especially for the young generation. Um, this is a rare opportunity to dive into the spirit and radical claims and passion in and for architecture of the 1960s and 70s in this country and beyond, uh, which is so beautifully timeless. You've been a student of Karl Schwanz, and I remember that moment in Munich, um, I think it was in 2015, and we did, no, sorry, 2005, and um, your um, BMW, while it was under construction, and you talked about um, how proud and honored you are to be the one building um, next to your former professor, next to the um, BMW tower um, built, as we learned, between uh, 1968 and 72. And obviously, you set your design in spatial and material dialogue um, with it. Same time in um, 68, U.S. Co. Pimo Blau designed the Plan Matic Villa Rosa and the famous cloud, a structure built from air, an organism for living. We saw um, some of that. A bit earlier, Schwanzer, together with um, Eugen Wörle, which was not mentioned um, in the film, had realized the building opposite the street, um, where I personally, the IOA, and many other institutes, departments, and individuals have the privilege to learn, teach, and work in. I am very much looking forward to listening to more from your side, reflecting on Karl Schwanzer and its legacy. I'm glad that we have you, Chiara, this board for a conversation um, with Wolf Briggs after the screening now. Um, I am looking forward to hear more and Chiara, you are a proof that the uh, future of architecture is a bit more female. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Also, thank you very much, Max Kruger, for the great film. I really enjoyed watching it. Also, having studied some of um, Karl Schwanz's buildings at university, it was really impressive to also somehow get to know him a bit more through this film. So, thank you very much. Now, Mr. Prix, you have studied at the um, Vienna University of Technology and Karl Schwanzer was your teacher. 
Can you tell us a bit more about your one, one of your teachers? Yes, because it was not that there has been a studio like it's here, but it's more like a lecture scenario, right? Um, I think you can also take a microphone in order that everybody can hear you. And um, yeah, can you just tell us more about your first meeting and also somehow your first impressions about the architect? Yeah, I think I'm the wrong person to, to talk about more than uh, more about Schwanzer. Yes, of course. More about Schwanzer than than as a teacher. Yeah. I, I don't know him privately. I didn't work in his office. Um, I just knew him as a teacher and as an architect. Yeah. I think he was the strongest architect at this time in Austria. And uh, uh, some, someone says he was an international architect. This is a little bit an error because, but understandable because in Austria it's everyone who builds um, in Vorarlberg an international architect. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless he was a very strong architect and I think um, I know three important things he did while I was a student. Yeah. He did the uh, Phillips House. It was the first, I think in Austria for sure, the first uh, pre-tense concrete building for the candy delivering part of this building. But anyone can hear me. So for the building? Yes. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. For, uh, pretense the structure for a building which was really new and the BMW building uh, the building I think was very influential for me or us because he built a building from top to the ground and as a teacher he he was very strong I have to say in terms of I said in, 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 at the BMW festival for his building, er war ein böser Lehrer. He was very, sometimes very angry. On the other side, he was very interested in the upcoming crazy things at this time students were doing. I remember when, uh, when we had, <coughs> and uh, when we, built the Villa Rosa <laughs> as a project for him in the, in, in the aula of the Technical University. He really, he really wants to step in and want to experience the things. Yeah? We couldn't explain what we were thinking about that. But he was, he was um, when I did the first lecture, lecture of my life in the Bau, Bau Forum in Vienna, he was there, and he was sitting in the first ray, uh, row, and uh, just said yes or no. So it was a little bit supportive, I would say. On the other hand, when I won an, um, this UEA competition, student competition, uh, it was also a program for the Biden era, zwei. And he was forced by the assistant to come over at midnight because the assistant was not sure what we are gluing on the presentation boards. <laughs> and he came and said, that's impossible. You cannot do that. You cannot um, cut the edges of the photographs of your uh, uh, building project uh, round, and I said, okay, you know, I, we did some crazy things here, yeah, plastic uh, apartments and things like that, and he said, no, no, you can't do that, it has to be in the right format, and, and he said, okay, you are out. So we packed all our things and went off, and six weeks 
later I saw an exhibition of Carl and I saw that he cut all these photographs with round edges. So this was uh, teaching at the time, I would say. And why did you cut them in first place with round edges? Was this just like a... No, because all the partners, because they were um, all plastic, uh, had because of plastic, they had round edges. Yeah. The, 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 the rooms were round, because at this time we had to do that. No. So now, now, I also know that you thought at Angewandte in Studio Prix from 1990 to 2011. Um, did you take what you learned from Schwanzer and apply some of it also in your um, teaching process? I have to say that the most important thing for us, for our students, was that he appointed Gitter Feierstein as his assistant. Because it, uh, it was not so, uh, we were not so close with Mr. Uh, Schwanzer um, because there were no reviews at this time where you can talk to the teacher and discuss with him. It was called, till I started to teach here on the Angewandte, it was called Korrektur, not review, Korrektur. Yeah? And when I tried to invite people here, the first year I was here, I tried to invite people from the outside, my friends, from the very, very young architects. The committee said, you are the teacher. We don't know, uh, we don't need to have foreign teacher on this school. This was the time when I started here to teach. <laughs> Schwarzer had correction. I never, never heard him talk about my project, which we, uh, I did for him. He was n never in the school, and there were no table grids, nothing. So this was the time. But nevertheless, we accepted him as a strategic uh, ghost mind, and very strong in arguing for his movies. And the most, I, I didn't learn technical issues from him. We didn't learn that. We, we had to do some project like designing a fire station or something like that, which I, I was really not interested in. But anyway, he was telling us also anecdotes, strategic things which for me, were more important than the technical details. For example, he told us in a lecture, which were always very funny on one hand, uh, on the other hand, very serious, um, he told us how he got uh, the project for BMW, where he won the, the, the competition, but the people there, the committee there, didn't know how they can work in the in a round office. So what he did, and Neumann, I don't know whether he is here, Neumann was a, a, a co-worker in his office, he told me that he built a one-to-one -one model of this um, office, placed their secretaries and uh, machine uh, typewriters to convince the people the BMW people that it's a normal and very effective uh, office. What I learned, and this is what I remembered when we were in front of the same problem at our BMW building, because I saw that no one, no one of this committee really understand what's going on in this building. So we couldn't do a one-to-one -one model, but what we did, we built a model one to, I think one to 50, it was long like this. And we invited imaginary forces, a movie company from LA to make a movie. And we presented the movie in a rented uh, factory 
with a big screen like this, big screen, full screen, and then we made this, um, uh, show the, the movie, so that people, uh, the, 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 not the jury, the, the client, so that the people of the client can see what's going on. And this was the first time uh, uh, they understood what we planned to do. So, I have to tell you that imaginary forces, this movie costs 800,000 euro, dollars at this time. And while I saw the movie, I presented the movie, four minutes, I was, I have to say, a little bit nervous. Yeah? And then when the, the head of the committee said, okay, we build it, can you imagine how <laughs> I felt if, if we didn't, uh, didn't win the competition and we didn't build it, I think I wouldn't sit here. Now you're already talking about your building the BMW well that is really close to this Fiat cylinder from Karl Schwanzer. Can you just tell us a bit how was this for you to build something that close to a building from your teacher? It must have been pretty impressive, no? It was like, like a very, very important building next to an important building. I'm not sure. <laughs> No, no, on the other hand, uh, if you look close, then we, we started to create a kind of ensemble. It's not the building here and the building there, but there has maybe the same, maybe the same vocabulary in feeling that building is an adventure. So, and we cut the roof so that everyone in the building, in our building, can see the, the building of Karl Schulz. There's a story I have to tell you. When, um, when Karl Schwanz, it was shortly before Christmas, and you know at this time the professors always had white coats, because to show them that they are more important than everyone in the school. So, so he showed up and said, oh, colleagues, er sagte, Kolleginnen und Kollegen, from now on, I believe on the Santa Claus. I won the competition for BMW. I don't know when, um, how many years later, I was sitting in the Angewandte, yeah, preparing something for talking to the students. I got the, uh, the call and said, uh, you won the BMW uh, competition. And I went to the students and said, the only thing I can really teach you is be patient. In architecture, you have to be very patient. Maybe in 40 years later, you can build next to my building somewhere. <laughs> Carl Schweitzer. Did you also see the film actually? Or no? I tried it three times. <laughs> and and you every no, no. And every time I see this this very good actor Ofcharek playing Karl Schwanzer, I have to say, okay, this is a caricature of Schwanzer, it's not Schwanzer, because I, I met him, I know how he was walking. In this movie, he seemed to me uh, uh, Oberlehrer. He acts like Oberlehrer, and this was for sure not Karl Schwanzer. Yeah? Yeah, I understand why he's was chosen because it's marketing, I understand that. But he is for sure not Karl Schwarzer. It's, uh, Karl Schwarzer was more, more layered. And I think, uh, of course I saw some of my colleagues talking about him, what Laurit said, that he was, in, uh, in spite of being a heavy guy, he was like a ballet dancer. Yeah? And this is not, 
reproduced by Mr. Ochai. He said, I like him. Actually, I like him very much. But as a teacher, I don't want my, I like Karl Schwarz as well, and I loved him as a teacher because he brought in the, the more important teacher for me into the school, namely Feuerstein. But uh, I saw him and, and a respectful person, yeah? and this is not. Yeah, I think this is what I, you know, I criticized at the very beginning, and he's. But the movie is a great movie. And the, I'm talking about the representation of uh, Karl Schwarzer as a person. Yeah, because I have to say, as, as I already said in the beginning, as a student I only knew his buildings. And I never really got in touch with the person Karl Schwarzer itself, because we studied the buildings and the architecture behind it. And for me it was quite impressive to see him and to get these ideas behind. like. I somehow think that I got a feeling for the person. Even, maybe not the whole package, but this is also probably quite impossible because... I think... Uh, we do not produce copies of it. Yeah, he was much more humorous than Ocelic. <laughs> yeah. This movie. And this is... Uh, I, I, I miss that in, nowadays in architecture, the humor. It was, it was for me, in the short movies, when you can see him, yeah? yeah so he's, he was a humorous guy as well. I have one more question for you to finish our conversations, because there will be probably also some questions in our public. Um, how much relevance do you think does these around like 50-year-old buildings have for the present time? And what can we learn from Schwanzer that is still relevant today? I don't know whether people here know the buildings, except the older one. Have you been? Have you been in the Phillips House? Have you seen it, or have you seen the BMW? We just watched the film, so we all have no, some no, 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 no. This is a really not acceptable excuse. If you want to judge a building, if you want, you have to experience the building. We shouldn't fall in this trap that images or movies replace the three-dimensional building. Nowadays, yeah, check, uh, just check it on the screen, boom, boom, next, boom, boom, next. And then say, okay, this is interesting because they use the the newest program. This is, this is not that. So I think it's very important to see the movie. It's very important that the movie was done. It's very important that you can at least see in some short sequences uh, Karl Schwarzer, Schwarzer as a person. I don't know whether the people here now, the young architects know now what he did and why he is so important. Mm. I'm not sure now about Karl Schwarzer, but if you want to know it, you can I give a lecture about Karl Schwarzer. Mm. <laughs> I just uh, but I have to give him more credit in order to to make it more uh, but you just say that images and movies do not really show the whole building. But right before you told me about this huge project where you produced this film about the BMW Welt and showed this to the people to impress them and to show them your building and to impress them. So somehow, because this is what we also do in architecture nowadays, we have this whole technology, we build this VR rooms in order to show the buildings that is technical. Yeah, but like that's it. the fact. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. A, so believe it, believe it. I wish you good luck. <laughs> believe that. Try it in reality. What, what, of course you have to make this fake um, uh, renderings. Of course you have to make movies and things like that. But it doesn't help you if it comes to the point of architecture. 
Anyway, so of course, because the clients nowadays are stupid like the, like the renderings, so they are at the same level of intelligence. But uh, it never helps you the reality to real, to architecture. That's all I say. But I don't want to talk about architecture. I want to finish because uh, I'm a little bit cold and the longer I'm talking, the more bacterians flying around. <laughs> and, uh, outside there, uh, there is some wine. Yeah, thank you. Can we just still ask the public if there is one important question? If there is, is someone who really wants to ask a question? As he said. <laughs> Otherwise, there is still a small reception at the end of the talk where you can still talk with each other, also with Max Gruber. I think you will stay with me. Well then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.